General warm up, check. Dynamic stretching, check. Next on the checklist is the day two of the 61225 workout. Welcome back. Today is bicep tricep day. I'm Vince Del Monte. Okay, so before we get started, I want to tell you guys how we're selecting the exercises today. I'm going to introduce you to a very strategic approach as opposed to a shotgun approach to exercise selection. So there's a concept called positions of flexion. It was um, pioneered by a man named Steve Holman who uh, writes and works for Iron Man magazine. It's absolutely brilliant and it basically targets three different um, ranges when we're doing a range of motion. We have the extreme end, which is a stretch position. We have the mid-range, and then we have the peak contraction, which is the top of the position. So when we're selecting our exercises, we want to try and select moves that train all, that emphasize each one of those positions of flexion for optimal development. That way we're gonna have a more strategic approach to blasting our muscle fiber. So that's how I've selected the arm exercises today. So the first one is a mid-range movement, the second one is a, a stretch movement, and the third one is a peak contraction movement. We didn't do this in the shoulder workout yesterday just because of um, limited space and uh, um, unable to get access to certain equipment. So, with that said, I wanna say one thing. <laughs> I'm begging you guys, when you're doing your bicep curls, to not do the no curl bicep curl. Who here knows what the no curl bicep curl is? I would say about 95% of guys, girls in the gym do the no curl bicep curl. Here it is. Hip extension, hip flexion, hip extension, hip flexion, and about one inch of elbow flexion at the top. That is called the no curl bicep curl. Believe it or not, there are ways to move your body to get a bar from the bottom to the top without actually performing the function of the muscle you're trying to, cha trying to change. So this exercise kills the potential for that happening. All right, let's get started. The first giant set for biceps starts off with a standing dumbbell supinated curl. One of the functions of your bicep is to supinate your forearm, so we're going to incorporate that into this first move with some support so that we get rid of all that hip flexion, trunk flexion business that has nothing to do with flexing your elbows. Then we're going to be doing an incline cable curl, and then we're going to do a variation of a concentration curl. You'll like this one. All on one little apparatus. I have done my two warm-up sets, so I'm going into my first work set, and remember we have to abide by the tempos. 4-0-X, 3-0-X, then 2-0-X, or else the whole workout's a wash. All right, here we go.
Two minutes rest. So we're gonna keep this workout on us today. We're gonna abide by our two minute rest. We're not gonna take two minutes and one second. At a minute 45, we're gonna start getting ready so we can start the set at two minutes. That's what a two minute rest means. Doesn't mean you start setting up your weights after two minutes. I'm gonna give you guys a little tip when you guys are training your biceps to avoid doing the no curl bicep curl. One thing you can do when it starts getting really heavy and you wanna lean back is contract your glutes. Pull your abdominals in, contract your glutes kinda of like you're doing a pelvic tuck and that'll keep you locked down to the ground and it'll help you continue to keep the emphasis on your biceps without doing this, which is not a bicep curl. All right, I got five seconds. and drop down to the 45s. That's a big stretch. Twenty-five reps. Go tell your blow, but maintain that tempo. Two zero X. Wow, that pump is absolutely insane. It's skin, pump, it's skin ripping. So what we just did there was we targeted the type 2B, the type 2A, and the type 1 fibers in one big mother set. 43 reps continuously. That's called a giant set. Some refer to it as a tri set. Uh, a couple notes um, on the exercise selection. Notice when I was doing the incline curls with cables, I wasn't doing this. Not only does that look silly, but it's completely unintelligent. Um, the nerve that runs into your bicep that sends the signal to give it strength comes through your neck. So if you're moving your neck around, you're not creating a nice open flow for the signal to go through. Same with the third exercise and the first exercise. Notice that 
I kept my neck still. I try to do my best to keep my body motionless. I try to keep my shoulders still. Now your bicep crosses your shoulder joint, so it's impossible to avoid all shoulder flexion, but you wanna try and keep your shoulders down and back, and you really wanna focus on the function of the biceps to extend and to flex, all right? We're not um, turning this into a total body movement like you saw um, me do the no curl bicep curl at the start. The reason I set myself up here was to lock myself down. I don't want hip extension, I don't want trunk flexion to get the weight up. I want to isolate my arms. I'm here to train my arms. I don't care how much weight I lift, so I got to lock myself down. So by maintaining this position, you'll find you work against more resistance as well. You're going to get a bigger stress. And one of the functions of the bicep is to supinate your forearm. So that's why I um, had uh, supinating dumbbell curls. I think that's it. When it comes to biceps, uh, we're gonna go through three sets for beginners, four sets for intermediates, and five for advanced. But I'm telling you, I think five is gonna be a lot for the majority of people if you hit the right loads. And one last thing, it is normal for your weights to drop up to 20% from set to set. Uh, anything more and you've miscalculated, and you wanna try and recalculate your weights and do better next workout. But uh, these take a huge toll and uh, you need to uh, be prepared to drop your weights from set to set. That is okay, that is acceptable. Don't beat yourself up. All right guys, on to triceps. All right, it's time to hit the triceps. What we've done for exercise selection is we've gone with a loaded dip, parallel bar dip, and uh, we could have gone with a close grip bench. Either are acceptable. They're gonna really load all three heads of the tricep. Then we're going to do a stretch exercise. We're gonna introduce you guys to side leaning tricep extensions, which puts your uh, tricep in a stretch position. Excellent, excellent um, way to also keep constant tension on the tricep. And then we're gonna finish off with an overhead rope extension with pronation of the wrist at the top to get the long head of the tricep. So we're really going to strategically hit all three heads here. We're not taking a random shotgun approach like the meatheads at your gym. Okay, let's get this rolling. Now, parallel bar dips, um, you're probably gonna be going weighted. If you're working with your body weight, this might be a great way to uh, just uh, hit six reps with your body weight and keep it moving. Get that four second negative. When I said pronation of the wrist, I basically meant to turn the rope handles outwards. 
As you can see, I grossly miscalculated my load on this exercise here. I cut it like almost in half to get 25 reps because I started way too heavy. That might happen, that's not a problem. Just learn from your decisions and make better decisions next time. So let's get that clock rolling. Two minutes. So before we do the final set, I've mentioned this in the last video series, but you guys might not notice, and you might have noticed that um, I'm dealing with an issue with my left elbow. I've been dealing with this for a couple years now. I can't fully straighten my left arm. I've got bone chips in here. I'm actually at the point where I'm considering surgery to get them all removed. And um, that way I can get closer to 100% range of motion. So I have a hard time training my triceps and biceps. So if my form looks kind of weird, it might just be because, because of the structural issue that I'm dealing with, all right? So I've got away with it for probably more than I should have gambled with. The way I got out of that tricep extension was very, very bad. Do not do what I just did. I'll show you the proper way. So this is the way you come out safely. Never put the very extreme ranges of any exercise under extreme force. <clears throat> Starts off easy and just gasses you. <sighs> 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 
So, whew, that's two sets. Actually, it's considering the limited range I have in this tricep, I've got a huge pump in my arms. So, that's it guys, that's the 6, 12, 25 arm workout. Two minutes rest and you'll do your third set if you're a beginner, four sets if you're intermediate, five if you're advanced. And I uh, really want to encourage you guys to record your weights and focus on improving 2% every workout. That's a 2% rule in strength training where you should always try and start about 2% heavier every consecutive workout. So um, if you're not recording your weights, you're just guessing. You're literally just wasting your time, I'll be honest. But what you're doing is kind of like playing the lottery. You're just hoping you get stronger. I bet you guys laugh at people that play the lottery. Well, that's what you're doing when you go to the gym, not recording your numbers. So you guys have to do that. So that's it guys. Um, I usually try and have this done by the time the workout's over. I don't like taking my BCAs with my protein powder because you kind of compete for absorption. BCAs are absorbed a lot quicker than a protein powder. So I like to have my BCAs in the workout, have them done, have them in me. And then once my workout's done, I'm gonna have some hydrolyzed whey protein. I'm gonna have some greens start alkalizing my body. Go home, we're gonna have a workout meal that consists of protein and vegetables, primarily fast digesting proteins and slow digesting carbohydrates with a lot of greens. And we'll have some fish oils as well and then we'll kind of repeat that meal with, that meal with different food choices a few hours later as well. So the post-workout window is never just one meal, it's multiple wheel meals after the workout is over. I think that's it guys, we'll see you guys next time. Rest up and uh, you guys get a day off now. And when we come back, we're gonna be training legs. And then we'll finish up the week with chest and back. And then you'll have a brand new training program that focuses on strength endurance. That's the training effect you guys can expect from the end outcome of this program. And remember what we said in the introductory video, the training effect is only experienced if you recover from the training. So take uh, your recovery modality seriously. If you got any comments or questions, you can find me below or you can join my free newsletter, vincedelmonifitness.com. All right, we'll see you soon. I'm out.